Every once in a while, you find something perfect. An open letter to J.P. Sears. So this is an impromptu open video to J.P. Sears with a side note to my friend Zuby. Uh, J.P., uh, you've not, you and I have never met. I'm a ex-woke libertarian atheist. I've seen you on stage at Freedom Fest and Tacoma. Um, and I made this video because I've come upon a piece of perfection. And I would like to present this perfection to you. It's four minutes long. I know that when you hear an atheist talking to you, a lot of you, you just want to shut down. I don't want you to shut down. When you begin to watch this video, you're going to feel cognitive dissonance. And you're going to want to shut this video down. You're going to want to turn the video off. And I'm going to ask you, watch this four-minute video. It is near perfection. And the reason that I want you to watch it is not to convince you to change your religious beliefs, uh, but rather to help you to see the world through my eyes just for four minutes. I hope you enjoy it. So, what's new with you? I'm glad you asked. I'm in Christian now. Oh, dear God. What's that? It's where I identify as my beliefs. So, you derive your identity from your religion? That sounds very ideological. Kinda. The only difference is that normally being ideological with beliefs is something you do. But with Christianity, it's something you are. And therefore, it makes the mental instability of it even worse for you. Well, that... That doesn't sound very good for you. No, it's great for me. I find getting my sense of self from my beliefs makes me more rigidly unwilling to change my mind about anything. Why? Because I have my beliefs. And then instead of staying in an open, curious mindset towards those beliefs, I just believe my beliefs. And then I believe I am my beliefs. Therefore, if I were to let go of Christianity, it makes me feel as though my life would end because I believe who I am is that belief. It is my life. Okay. So it makes me extremely unwilling to change my mind about anything because I don't want to die. Does that feel good? Dude, it feels great. Since I converted to Christianity, I feel super certain of myself all the time, which makes me feel very secure. And because I no longer intellectually explore any new findings or mysteries that challenge my beliefs, it keeps me feeling very secure. Even when your belief is wrong? Especially then. The best part is that when I'm wrong, I'll never know it. My sense of certainty derived from my self-preservation of not letting any of my beliefs die because I think they're who I am empowers me to think I'm right about everything. So no matter how much proof there is to the contrary, you just won't change your mind? Right. And I think I know the answer to this, but where do you get your beliefs from? The Bible. And therefore, because you believe you are your beliefs, you get your sense of who you are from the Bible? Yeah, where else are you going to get it? I don't know. I mean, perhaps from within yourself? No, I don't think so. Well, for your own good, would you be willing to consider that you are not a Christian? Nope. But if you were to, you might realize that your beliefs aren't something that you are. They're something that you have. And what you are is a vastly more powerful consciousness that observes your beliefs. And from that place, you can simply let a belief go when a new, more accurate belief comes along. It's kind of like throwing away a piece of garbage when you're done with it, rather than holding on to it forever because you think you are that piece of garbage. But then what would I self-identify with? Yourself. Uh, sounds like fascism. We're supposed to believe that we are Christians first. Being disobedient with that directive is certainly fascism. No, I think the term is called empowerment. And at the end of the day, ancient wisdom has it that happiness has to come from within, which necessitates you need to be connected with yourself in order to have happiness. It doesn't come from beliefs that come from outside of yourself that you simply label as your faith. I'm having a real hard time following your logic here, bro. Uh, but it's pretty simple. You just have to see that when I'm kind of willing to fight you to the death on this one because it feels like you're threatening my life. But I'm not. I'm secure enough in my unstable sense of self that's not based on myself that I'm pretty willing to get dangerous for my cause here, bro. And what's your cause? Jesus Christ. Okay, man. And if I may share a little insight for your own good, you and so many other people make it really hard to connect with you. 
I just don't know what's wrong with you guys. Uh, what do I have to do to connect with you then? Just get rid of all your beliefs and thoughts that are derived out of critical thinking, evidence, proof, actual science, and reality, and then believe what I believe. That would be very validating to my self-identity. Everything else feels pretty life-threatening, and I will react accordingly. I don't know how there's any hope for you. <laughs> and so this recording was made from a recording that J.P. Sears make and made in which he uh, likes to be the guy who um, is the logical one. And in the video that you just saw, what you saw was him being the logical one and that version of him in the red, that little guy, crazy red guy, he was woke and crazy and... Um, J.P. Sears used pretty good arguments against him. Um, the reason I wanted to do this is because I wanted to show that when it comes to religion, you're the other guy, J.P. You're the other guy. And the same goes with Zuby, and the same goes with everybody else. You're great when you're talking about other people's wokeism and the ridiculousness inside that wokeism. But when it comes to actual skepticism, you guys do not apply the same methods to your own to your to your own mentalities to your own ideologies. JP Sears as a Christian breaks every rule that that red guy breaks. Um, are you a Christian or are you a person who just has Christian faith? Uh, are you therefore separated from that Christian faith and you can look at it from the outside and you can judge it when new data comes in that proves it wrong? Uh, and then can you justify that garbage because that's not you? When JP says this about wokeism, he's right. But he refuses, as all Christian conservatives do, to turn it among themselves. This is a perfect example. This is why I wanted to show you this mirror, JP Sears. You're a good, you're smart, but you're a hypocrite. All Christian conservatives who hate wokeism are hypocrites. Because if you apply the exact same thinking that you do to criticize wokeism on your own views, you would be forced to change your views. This video is not meant to inflame. This video is not meant to enrage. This video is meant to open your eyes so that you can see the hypocrisy in your action. You can see why we outside religion look at you and we listen to you. And then you turn on the religion stuff and we just go, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah because it discredits you. You are a hypocrite. You are an open, real hypocrite because you're not applying the same logic. You criticized JP. You made that video and you were so pompous, right? That video was you being pompous against wokeism. And you don't even realize that when you turn the word wokeism or identitarianism to the word Christianity, that I'm the guy on the left and you're the guy on the right. And that's true for every Christian conservative out there. So take a moment, have a mirror with a smile. You judge others, but a wise man once said, judge not others, lest ye be judged, JP. And here you are. I judge you for not being skeptical about your Christianity, not nearly as skeptical about your Christianity as you are about wokeism. It's difficult because we atheists spend so much time trying to uh, explain to our Christian counterparts why there is hypocrisy or why we feel there is hypocrisy in anybody who can be anti-woke and still religious. And this is a, just the perfect example. So I hope that my Christian conservative friends can watch this video and see th through our eyes, see their, see their own hypocrisy through our eyes um, and maybe reflect on whether or not it makes sense to call yourself a Christian rather than a person who has Christian beliefs and who is separated from their beliefs and who can look at them and judge them and believe them or and, ev and evaluate them and look at the science and do that. Are you a Christian or are you a person who has Christian faith at this time? Thanks for listening, folks. And thank you very much for J.P. Sears for coming out with this a really, really perfect example of the cognitive dissonance that is faced by Christian conservatives. Thick cognitive dissonance that just stops them from seeing the obvious. Thanks a lot.